piece to the 12. So this is going to be a, a, a look on the Giants. Like, what were the Giants? What were they really? You know, and all this, all right? We're going to kick it off with Genesis 6 and 4. And we're going to break this down, all right? Because Giants aren't what you think they are. All right, they have been... Um, they have been turned into, like, Godzilla, basically. Anyway, it's Genesis 6 and 4. There were giants in the earth in those days, and also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bare children, to them the same became mighty men, which were of old, men of renown. Now, when people read this verse, by the way, this is not talking about, this sons of God in this context is not talking about the angels, by the way. All right, I just did a two-part series on the truth about fallen angels and BBL angels. All right, uh, this was the breakdown on fallen angels, and this was a response to someone that uh, watched this video. So watch those for more on the fallen angels. But basically, in short, in short, uh, sons of God, if you were read Job the first chapter and Job the second chapter, you can find out that the angels are called the sons of God. But also, you understand that the angels are not the only people that are known as the sons of God. And I'm going to get Luke 3 and 37 through 38 for more reference. You can start at verse 23 to get the full thing, 23 through 38. But I'm just going to get these two verses. And then we're going to get into the giants. I just want to break this down real quick. This is Luke 3 and 37. Which was the son of Methuselah, which was the son of Enoch, which was the son of Jared, which was the son of uh, Malalel, which was the son of Canaan, all right? Which was the son, one second, which was the son of Adam, which was the son of God, all right? So Adam was the son of God, going back to this, right? So Adam was considered the son of God. All these people named in this list are the sons of God, by the way. How do you prove that? Well, from Adam, it goes to Seth. Remember, Adam had Cain and Abel. But why does it go straight to Seth? Where is Cain and Abel at? Because this is the lineage of the sons of God. Just like what? Abraham had uh, Ishmael and Isaac. But Isaac was chosen. All right? And then we got Jacob and Esau. Jacob was chosen. So those are the sons of God. Understand? Um, so that, that just goes in on that. All right? Now, for those of you that still might not believe me, no, it's talking about the angels. They were having sex with women. Well, Yahweh Shai, which who is commonly known as Jesus Christ, Yahweh Shai Hamashiach, he 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 brings even more clarity into it. Matthew twenty-two and thirty. For in the resurrection, they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are as the angels of God in heaven. So he just tells you straight up the the, the angels do not marry, nor are they given in marriage. And I just want to get so. Angel doesn't see this woman and go, my mind is telling me no, but my body it ain't happening. All right, that ain't happening. All right, the angel gives him the curve. All right, straight up, shorty, shorty, <laughs> shorty, try to bust it down and he give her the cold shoulder. All right, because angels are not marrying nor are they giving in marriage. I did that in the whole video. All right, and even you look at this word marry, it means what? To give offspring. Look at that, literally etymology, which means origin of the word marry. It says. I'm going to highlight it. I'm going to highlight it, actually. It says, Mary, to give offspring in marriage. All right? So it tells you straight up the angels are not marrying. They're not giving offspring. Meaning, this didn't happen. All right? Meaning, so we're coming back to here where it says the sons of God came in onto the daughters of men. That's talking about the sons of God through this family line. All right? Um. So all this stuff you hear about angels and demons having kids like on the Devil May Cry remake DMC they had all oh, you know you're part angel part demon or in, or in Blue Exorcist you have the sons of Satan well that's that's false that's the heathen imagining a vain thing because once again angels do not marry nor are given in marriage marry mean what to give offspring that's not happening all right now as far as the giants. Uh, there were giants in the earth. Yes, giants are actually real, or, or giants were actually real. Giants existed. I'm gonna break. I'm gonna go into that breakdown in a minute. All right. So when it says the sons of men had daughters, <laughs> or, 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 excuse me, it says when the sons of God 
had children with the daughters of men, it would be something like this. All right, you got this tall, these tall people with their, uh, well, I don't know her nationality, but with these appear to be heathen women. All right, so if this person does this with this person, hey, probably gonna have a big kid. You know, chances are. But and this is not the only time the sons of God. This is not the only time the sons of God uh, came in onto the daughters of men. Um, you can read that account in Ezra 9 and, and 1. I'm going to start at 1 through 7. And we're going to get to the actual height of the giants later. All right, So just watch the whole video before jumping to conclusions. All right, let's get this. Ezra 9 and 1. On the down. Now when these things were done, the princes came to me saying, The people of Israel. Again, the people of Israel. Um, the people of Israel are the sons of God. The word Israel means son of God or prince of God or prince of power. All right, Yashar Allah. But anyway, now when the things are done, the princes came to me saying, the people of Israel and the priests and the Levites have not separated themselves from the people of the lands. So our people didn't want to separate themselves from the people of the lands. Doing according to their abominations, even of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Perizzites, the Jebusites, the Ammonites, and the Moabites, and the Egyptians, and the Amorites. See, what happens is, when our people don't want to separate ourselves from these other people, they just start taking on their customs, which I'm going to get into later. That's what happens. All right, holy means separate. When the Lord say, be holy unto me, hey, the word holy means separate, man. So when you're hanging out with all these heathens, you pick up heathenish manners, which is what it just went into. For they have taken, now check this out. This goes right in here with, uh, the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bear children to them. Now this goes right in here with Ezra 1, or really verse 2. Check it out. Ezra 9 and 2. For they have taken of their daughters for themselves and for their sons, so that the holy seed, the separate seed, the holy seed, all right, the holy seed, um, have mingled themselves with the people of those lands. Yeah, the hand of the princes and rulers have been chief in this trespass. So again, our people, our people are laying down with these other nations, man. All right, and having children with them, just like it was in this. All right, and and let me say this too: if your father is an Israelite, you are still an Israelite, according to the scriptures. How do you prove that? Moses had Moses had a child with an Ethiopian woman, who was also known as a Midianite, and he and through that child he had. A son named Gershom. Gershom is still an Israelite. All right, to prove that in a simple way. Now, I could do a video again on you who are your father is at another date, but that's a short version. But our people was mixing their seed with these other nations, man. And when I heard this thing, I rent my garment and my mantle and plucked off the hair of my head uh, and of my beard and sat down astonished. Then were assembled unto me every one that trembled at the words of, God, of the God of Israel because of the transgression of those that had been carried away. And I sat astonished until the evening sacrifice. And at the evening sacrifice, I rose up from my heaviness, having rent my garment and my mantle. I fell upon my knees and spread out my hands unto the Lord my God. So a brother was ripping his coat. He was pulling out his hair, man. Because he was, he, was he, was, he was upset with our people, man. And said, oh my God. I am ashamed and blush to lift up my face to thee, my God, for our iniquities are increased over our head, and our trespass is growing up into the heavens. And this tres or this is dealing with many trespasses, specifically dealing with dealing with these heathen women and having sex with them, man. All right, and producing offspring, and then later on they end up going off. I could do another video on that in itself too, but check this out. Since the days of our fathers. Have we been in great trespass unto thee this day? And for our iniquities have we, our kings and our priests, been delivered into the hand of the kings of the lands, to the sword, to the captivity, and to a spoil, and to confusion of face as it is this day. Once again, yes, once you have two, uh, often than not, we have two lineage, the two lineages, especially in today, where they teach, oh, you know, you're just a little bit of this, a little bit of that. Then you start picking up the customs, man. All right, but again, if you have, if you're the son of an Israelite man, you are still classified as an Israelite again. But 
Our people have always lusted after these other nations. Our people have always done that, man. And they do it now in the modern day. They do it now in the modern day, which is what's going into. Once again, the Holy Seed mingled themselves with the people of those lands. Just like from the beginning of Genesis, the sons of God came into the daughters of men. Our people have always been like that, man. And the scriptures speak against that. Let's get that. Let's get Nehemiah 13 and 27. Shall we then hearken unto you to do all this great evil, to transgress against our God? How do we transgress against our God? In marrying strange wives. Yeah, in marrying the woman of the other nation, other nations. Deuteronomy 7 and 3. All right, let's get Deuteronomy 7 and 3, the law. Neither shalt thou make marriages with them. Thy daughter thou shalt not give unto this son, nor his daughter shalt thou take unto thy son. So this is a, this is in transgression, man. But our people were doing this like Nehemiah said, or like Ezra said. Since the days of our fathers, we've been in that trespass, man. What trespass? The transgression of marrying strange wives. For they will turn away thy son from following me, that they may serve other gods. See, and that's what happens when you follow these people. What happens? For they will turn away thy son from following me, that they may serve other gods. See that? And that's what ends up happening. All right. I'm, I'm going to get a picture of that after this. I'll do it now, actually. See, what happens is when you start chasing after these other nations, you end up serving other gods, man. Next thing you know, you're a brother into damn Hinduism or you're damn into the Chinese New Year or you damn proud to be American and you <laughs> and you just completely forget the tenets of being an Israelite, man. The law, statutes, and commandments given to us by Yahweh Bashim Abishai. You start trying to appease your woman that's from these other nations, man. You start trying to go over extra with it, man. Uh, you start even trying to dress like them, all that type, trying to fit in, go to family, let them know, oh, I'm just like you guys, and all that other stuff, which is what? That's a trespass, man. All right. Uh, the Holy Seed. Um, so, yeah, but um, going back. Uh, now, as far as giants, why aren't giants around today? And again, you know, even though this lesson, I'm what, 13, 12 minutes in, and I'm more so talking about the seed aspect of giants, you know, I'm about to get into the giants now. Um, you got to understand that we're actually, according, uh, un, uh, in actuality, we're actually, what you would say, devolving. The earth is degrading. Second Ezra 14 and 17. For look, how much... For look how much the world shall be weaker through age. So much the more shall evils increase upon them that dwell therein. So the world gets weaker through age, man. And when the world gets weaker through age, so do its inhabitants. That's why you don't see a T-Rex walking around. Or a giant woolly mammoth. all right, Or the giants of the scriptures. Now when I say the giants of the scriptures, again, I'm not talking about this. But let me give you an example of us degrading through time. Alright, so the earth gets older. And it gets weaker through the age. And evils increase. Alright. So the earth gets older. Right? It's degrading. Let me give you some examples of, of us degrading as people. Oldest man recorded in the Bible. Genesis 5 or 27. And all the days of Methuselah were 960 and 9 years. And he died. So Methuselah lived to be 969 years old. 969 years old. Alright. Methuselah lived a very long time. Now let's go to Moses. At the time of Moses. Moses age in Deuteronomy 34 and 7. And Moses was 120 years old when he died. His eye was not dim, nor his natural force abated. So you have Moses. See, now we're in the time of Moses. Moses, he only lived to be 120 years old. But when he was 120 years old, he didn't have a hurt back or none of that. All right, His eyes never went dim. He still had his natural force. All right, he, he, In other words, he looked as if he was in his prime. All right, but he was 120. But nowadays, when you get old, you start to get decrepit and all manner of things. Now, granted, this also happened to our forefather, Isaac, as well as Jacob. Remember, they started to lose their vision, but the Lord was with Moses. But let's go to the scriptures. See, Moses lived to be 120 years old. Let's check this out. 70 years life expectancy. Psalms 90 and 10. 
The days of our years are three score years and ten. Three score means twenty. A score is twenty. So three twenty that's sixty plus ten that's seventy. All right. The days of our years are seventy years basically. Three score years and ten. And if by reason of strength they be four score years, yet is their strength labor and sorrow. For it is soon cut off and we fly away. Yeah, meaning we go back into the spirit world. And what does it mean? What if you, some people watching this might say, well, brother, what are you talking about? We live more than 70 years. You know, my grand grandma was 80 and 90 and whatever. That's why it says what? If you were to live four score years and up, hey, your strength and labor is sorrow. Meaning what? You got a bad back, a bad hip. You know, you got to take 30 million pills. All right, yeah, that's 70. See, a score is 20, 10. That's 60, 70, 70 years. See, watch this. When you get super old, what you got to do? You get Alzheimer's disease where, you loot, where your memory is destroyed. You get arthritis, inflammation of one or more point joints, causing pain and stiffness that can worsen with age. You got to take a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday pill box. That's what happens when you get up there at age, man. That's what it means by uh, sorrow and labor. All right, it's, it's, it's a chore to just be alive, man. When you really old like that. Alright, and then ultimately we all fly away into the spirit world. But as we know, all shall not see death as that's written. Because when the Lord returns, when Yahweh Shah returns, there will be certain people that never that never experienced death. Now, uh, when you go to the book of Enoch, which is debunked. I've been debunked it. I debunked it in the other two videos. In the book of Enoch, it says... And the woman conceived and brought forth giants, whose stature was each 300 cubits. These devoured all which the labor of men produced until it became impossible to feed them. Now, the, according to the book of Enoch, uh, the giants were 300 cubits and they ate people. All right. And what is 300 cubits? 300 cubits is 450 feet tall giants, according to the book of Enoch. That is not true. And just for a point of reference... This is a 230 foot Buddha statue, and look at look how big it is in comparison to these people. Well, this is saying that giants were bigger than this, and they were eating people. Absolute madness. All right, and according and according to this, according to the the Book of Enoch, 200 angels had sex with women and produced 200 200 of 450 feet tall giants. Man, absolute madness. Is that what it's talking about? No, that's not what it's talking about, man. Numbers 13 to 33. And there we saw the giants, the sons of Anak, which come of the giants, and we were in our own sight as grasshoppers, and so we were in their sight. So when you read this, um, it says the sons of Anak were, uh, were giants, which they were. And they were saying in our own sight we were like grasshoppers, which you can see because they look like grasshoppers in comparison to the 234 statue. But you have to understand, well, number one, these men, number one, these men were lying. Um, because the Most High killed them for that. You can read that about when the plague came. Most High killed the people that gave this report because it was an evil report. It was a false report. But number two, when it's saying that oh, they were as giants, or when it's saying they're giants and we were in their sight as grasshoppers, that's what you would call a hyperbole. That's what you would call a hyperbole. All right, what like like for example, for just for some examples, right? When <laughs> when a woman says that a man has a third leg, that means he has a large, you know, reproductive organ. When somebody says, "Oh, she's a man eater," that doesn't mean she's really a cannibal. All right, that doesn't that's not what it means. All right, when somebody says, "Uh, she will squash you like a bug," that doesn't mean she's gonna literally step on you like a bug. All right, when this woman says she wants to be broken half, doesn't mean she's literally wants to be broken half. Hyperbole. <laughs> when she says looking to get her back blown out, once again, that's hyperbole. None of these things are real. So, no, it wasn't literally a grasshopper, but I'm going to prove that anyway. Um, I'm going to prove that anyway. Um, Deuteronomy 7 and 1. Well, first of all, hold on. First of all, hold on. Let's get Goliath. Let's get an account of Goliath. 1 Samuel 17 and 4. And there went out a champion 
out of the camp of the Philistines named Goliath of Goth, whose height was six cubits and a span. So Goliath is a giant and his height was six cubits. I'll prove he's a giant in a minute. Meaning he was over nine feet tall. So nine feet is a whole hell of a lot different than 450 feet. You understand? A whole lot different than 450 feet. All right? Um, where, where are we at? Now let's get the account of the king of Bashan. All right? Deuteronomy 3 and 11. For O oh, king of Bashan remained of the remnant of the giants. Behold, his bedstead was a bedstead of iron. Is it not in Reboth of the children of Ammon? Nine cubits with the length thereof, and four cubits the breadth of it after the cubit of man. That's Deuteronomy 3 and 11. So in other words, Og was 12 feet high. How do we know Og was 12 feet high? Or how high, or, or how long was his bed? Nine cubits. All right, so that show you right there that Og was 12 feet high. Once again, not no damn 450 high. So... Basically, we could even go to 13 feet if you want. Basically, the tallest ever recorded giant in the scriptures by actual by actual standards is what? T 13 feet. Or 12 to 13 feet. Not no damn 450 feet, man. All right? And once again, they were using a hyperbole when they said the giant, we were as grasshoppers. And they were also lying. They, they got killed for that report. Deuteronomy 7 and 1. When the Lord thy God shall bring thee into the land, whether thou goest to possess it, and hath cast out many nations before thee, the Hittites, and the Girgashites, and the Amorites, and the Canaanites, and the Perizzites, and the Hivites, and the Jebusites, seven nations greater, greater and mightier than now. So what they were basically saying, when they said we're like grasshoppers, meaning they're going to step on us. You know, we're, they're, they're, they're greater than, and mightier than we are. They have more resources. They have a larger army. They have all these things, man. All right. Um, the Rephaim are known as the Giants. All right. Some more on that. The Rephaim. All right. The sons of Anak. The Anakim. All right. Now let's get some scriptures on the sons of Anak. Genesis 14 and 5. And the 14th year came. Of Chedar Lamar and the kings that were with him and smote the Rephaims and Ashtaroth, Karnam and Zuzims and Ham and the Emims and Shaven Karathim. Once again, the Rephaims, you go to this word Rephaim, Salakia. Rephaim just means the old tribe of giants. So Rephaim and Giant are interchanged with the giants, the old giants. The Emims dwelt therein in time past, a people great and many and tall as the Anakims. All right, as tall as the Anakims. All right, the Anakims were also known as the Emims. We're going to prove that. So the Emims were just as tall as the Anakims. And we know the Anakims were 12 to 13 feet. We know that. Um, Which was also, which also were accounted giants as the Anakims. But the Moabites called them Emims. So the Emims were just as tall as the Anakims. All right, but the Moabites called the Anakims, the Emims. So the giants had different names, basically. Or the specifically, these tribe of giants had different names from different nations. Just like now, how here, you'll say, oh, that's a black widow. But someone else, someone will say, that's a redback spider or something. Well, not really. Those are two different spiders. But uh, I don't know. I'm trying to think of an example. Uh, someone, someone here might say... Uh, I put that on my, uh, I don't know, I don't know. Yeah, y'all can put in the comments an example of that. But I can't really think of one uh, off the top of my head. You know, Deuteronomy 2 and 20. That also was accounted a land of giants. Giants dwelt there in an old time. And the Ammonites called them Zamzumims. So yet people were known as Emim, Zamzumims, Anakims. But they were accounted as giants. We know they were 12 feet. Deuteronomy 2 and 21, a people great and many and tall as the Anakims, but the Lord destroyed them before them and they succeeded them and dwelt in their stead. Once again, 12 to 13 feet. Uh, Goliath was nine feet tall. 
with none of them with no damn 450 feet tall. Imagine 200 of these guys walking around bigger than this shit. It's madness. But, um, and I'll tell you this too for you brothers that still. Oh, and let me prove that Goliath was a giant. Goliath, a famous giant of Gath, slain by David. So, Goliath was a giant, and Goliath was, let's get this highlighted. Goliath was nine feet tall, man. All right, so that's the truth, man. And even when you look up a giant, what's a giant? Refer to a man of great size and strength, all right? An unusually large person. So, yeah, 12. If I saw somebody that was 12 feet, that would be way taller than six feet, but it wouldn't be 450 feet, man. All right, and if you guys want more on this, y'all can watch a brother named, his title channel is titled Tribe of Judah Teach. And you can watch two videos he's done on Giants, man. All right, but you know the Giants wasn't no 450 feet. That's the truth on Giants, as well as the Sons of God that had these Giants. I will do a video on the Nephilim. No, the Nephilim don't mean what, what you think they mean, more than likely. All right, no, they're not half man, half angel. I will do a vi quick video on that at another date. And with that, I say peace to the 12. I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai, Yahweh being the name of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Shai is the Savior of the nation of Israel. Um, I want us to give a strong shalom to you brothers doing this work. In truth and sincerity, I want to give a shalom, which means peace, to you people that are listening and learning. And I want to give a shalom to you elders that's been doing this thing before me, man. We almost out of here. Shalom.